if he comes in over 150 or anything like that, I think he could possibly feel that extra weight. But particularly at the pace that Errol Smith fights. It's not going to be a pace where it's going to be a pace where he's going to be active three minutes of every round. And it's just like the Canelo fight with Khan. There was no lull in the action, so I could see that the extra weight that Khan was carrying actually began to affect him. Six rounds of reaction, his speed wasn't as, as well, and he became more and more stationary. So that's one thing you have to be wary of and wary of. That extra weight that he's not used to fighting could be a negative Yeah, because when it was uh, Andre, he, I think he took three or four fights at 75 to get, to exactly. get used to the weight. We have to activate to that weight. Uh, you assess what you're walking around in. You always keep a record of where he's doing his best sparring in camp. You know, if he's fighting at 135, his best sparring session might be 142, 141. Oh. So I would say that uh, he should come in close to his, his best sparring weight as opposed to I win because the extra weight is not going to turn over the strength. He's not going to be strong in these things, even though you have an extra weight and the extra muscle. That's a three month period that you put in somebody. It's not over the years. You haven't, had, you haven't had time for your body to really truly activate to it. So I think the closer he comes to his best bond weight, maybe coming in, maybe not just ran in at 47, but actually being as light as possible and to use the speed that he has to overcome the size of it, even if you ran the same the outside, because it's not a natural weight for you. So I think that's what you have to be careful, not to come in too heavy to try to match their weight pound for pound. I would go to the best fight weight, the best sparring weight for me. So with that being said, would you be significantly surprised if Mikey wins the fight? Is that, is that a big uh, upset in your mind? Of course. It is, it is, it is a real big upset. Um, I think anybody in boxing would say that. I, mean, I don't think there's nobody in here that would not there's nobody in this area right here that can confidently go and put a thousand dollars. Okay, go put a thousand dollars on my right now. With no odds, just a straight thousand dollars. You seriously think about it, you know? Because it's not that he can't do it, it's just that you haven't seen him under those circumstances. You haven't seen him exposed to that type of fight. A rugged fight. I'm sure he's going to land and share punches. I'm sure his IQ is going to come into focus. But that constant pressure that makes you redirect your IQ, it makes you have to reassess the situation, that constant pressure and just being hit on uh, where you have to, oh man, if he catches me clean with this, I could be hurt, you know? So, it's, it's a mental fight. He's got to be mentally in tune for every second of every round. He's got to know when and when not to. And, uh, but it's a fight. Anything can happen, and he believes in himself. And that's the first, it's the most, the most crucial thing. He believes in himself. So, belief can go a long way in the fight. And, uh, uh, I would advise Errol not to take a fight like this. I think he is. I think he's taking it serious because anybody who's challenging him, and you can't afford to make this fight, so I'm sure he's going to get the best position in this fight. Also. Lastly, for Canelo Jacobs, I, I know Danny's been, uh, I believe he's been in Northern California in your gym uh, in the past. With, how does he beat Canelo? Do you, do you think he beats Canelo on the night? Uh, this is very interesting fight. Uh, I think right now, going into the fight, it's a 50-50 fight. I think that the camps progress and, and uh, get closer and closer to the fights. Hey, Al. Hey, Burge. How, How you doing, doing baby? Good, good seeing you. Good seeing you. Um, be able to give a better assessment. The thing is, is can, in the, in the training camp, can Canelo produce the type of sparring that would assist him in Jacob's fight and vice versa from Jacob's side or Canelo? So I think right now so this is a 50 50 fight. I think it's a fight that's not going to go the distance. Either way. And I just thought Jacobs used his size. 
uh, effectively in that fight. Well, is there a weight clause on there? There is. Yeah. Fight? So it's right not, there, right there, they can pick the what is it, IDF rules or something? Ten pound limit. Ten, Ten pound limit. limit. So they they negated that already. So. Uh, but both that, those guys come in over 170, so it's. it's Odd. Right, but you would think it would affect Danny more than it would affect Canelo. Uh, so that that makes it a 50 50 fight. And, uh, everything is even across the board. So I think as a fight gets closer and closer, um, and the training camps kind of let out what's going on, I think that will give an indication who his favorite should be favored to win. Jay Prince uh, said last week. In, in, in Texas, that uh, Andre Ward beats every heavyweight. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but uh, uh, what's your take on Andre Ward at the heavyweight? If he were, to, if he were the comeback, what will be his stepping to get to a Deontay Wilder or an Anthony Joshua? How would you uh, move him? Uh, well, be, well, he doesn't have belt. That, that'll be hard for me actually to answer because uh, it's not going to happen. Okay. So, so it would be hard to answer. Um, but I would give him a good chance. Uh, the thing is, he knows how to fight tall fighters. Uh, he did no Olympics. Everybody was six six, six five. But it wasn't in the pro game. I mean, that's a lot of eyes, mass, and everything to overcome. So uh, it would take a lot of luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you know, the stars are his favorite. So, but I couldn't answer right now. Okay. You are. Virgil, let me ask you a question. Shit, um, Khan get past Crawford. Who do you guys want next? And also, would you be interested in a Pacquiao fight down the line? Because that's a fight people was intrigued about. Would you still be interested in fighting a 40 year old Pacquiao? Or you would like to go against the Spences and the Porters and those type of guys? So, you know, I'm sure that if he was past this fight, that Pacquiao fight is a fight. So, I'm interested in him. Mean, he has been chasing the fight. Uh, so the was I'm sure that he would take that fight. The welterweight division is so tough. I mean, you, you pick anywhere from one to five in yeah. fight. So, uh, I think at this stage in his career, he should make business decisions. Not popular decisions, but business decisions. What's going to make work the best for him? And what's going to pay off the best, I think. I think he's earned it right. So, um, if the Pacquiao fight was available, I'm sure you would too. How would what you? What about Spence Crawford? That fight in the future, how, how do you see that fight playing? Um, right now, I would say that was a 50-50 fight. Um, hmm. It's hard to go against either one of them. Because of the intangibles they bring to the ring. You know, can Crawford throw an arrow off? Can arrow pressure Crawford to the top of the fight? He needs to pressure and then to it. Can, can arrow handle uh, the in and out movement of Crawford? Can Crawford handle the pressure that arrow brings? So it's an intriguing matchup. Anytime you have a matchup where you have strengths on both sides, you have to say if you can get the fight right now. How would you? How would you summarize, uh, to quote Andre Ward, uh, Little G's career? Little G being Triple G career. How would you summarize his career to this point? Golovkin? Yes, Golovkin. Um, I think he's had a fantastic career. I mean, uh, he, was, he was built right. Okay. All right, thanks, Virgil. Thank you, Virgil. Thank you, Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.